All right, guys, welcome to this episode. Today we're going to talk a little bit about section three. This part of the one that the bongs out, the muns out, right before we kick and then come back to the guns out, right? Now, I just want to give you a quick tip on the muns out. My in Chinese means to ask. Asking hand. In other words, we're breaking a major Wing Chun rule in level one and two, where we're actually attacking first instead of counterfiring. It's not just a technique, but it's also a concept. Today, I'm just going to go through the actual technique. Learn here in Manza. There's many ways to get power, but in order to learn many, many ways to get power, we first got to learn how to avoid some common mistakes. Common mistake number one. Here, people wind up to do the Manza. That is not correct. You should just go directly into it. Do not wind up even though you think it gives you more power because this is used in a context where when you do a wrong bong so another punch is coming. In that case, if you wind up, you already got punched in the face. So don't wind up. Number two, because people are trying to get power, they hit the arm pretty hard, making the pressure going up. That's not right because when you bong so the punch is coming and not a wooden dummy, when you try to go too high, you're going to overcompensate your own balance. It will eventually become a subconscious habit that can get you um, hurt against a live opponent, right? So when you do bong so don't wind up. And when you go up, don't try to go up, but put the force in the center of the dummy. Never chasing arm, always chasing center. Another common mistake is people turn back to get power. Again, you simply don't have the time because if you're blocking one punch and your hand's down here and another shot's coming, he only have to move the mass of his arm to hit you, right? He's doing this or he's doing this, right? If you try to move your body back, now you have to move the mass of your leg, your, your body and your arm, you'll definitely get punched in the face. Action's faster than reaction. So, don't wind up, don't try to go too high, and don't turn your body back. Mistake number four that's very common when I see people teach this is when they go here, they rock this way. The reason why they put the weight this way is because they're preparing for the kick going this way. But that's not the best thing to do because if the shot's coming on this angle and I'm trying to stuff it or jam it, if I put my weight here, when he's putting his weight here, I'm going to throw myself all over the place, right? Because he's putting his whole weight behind the shot coming this way. If I put my weight this way, I'm going to get hit unless I'm ducking which is a good response, but not for this part of the wind dummy. That's not what the Manzo is for. When we get back, I'll give you a couple of application with Chris, and then we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, Chris, please come on in. So how do you use the Manzo technique, right? If you use it from a conceptual base, man means to ask for hands to attack first, there's hundreds of techniques you can do. If you do it from a literal point of view, then there's also many, many things you can do. Today, I'm gonna to give you one out of hundreds of ways because of time constraint. If Chris is punching and I'm doing a parallel technique, which is a jumsa, paksa, gansa, bongsa, that would be correct. If, if you should punch with this hand and end up on the inside gate, paksa like this, gansa like this, bongsa like this, bongsa like this, that's considered a wrong technique in Wing Chun, simply because if I'm on the outside, he can't really throw that shot safely. If he does, I'm already in, right? But if I'm on this side, when I do a pass out here and here, that's wrong because I open myself up. If I'm here, I am in trouble. If I'm here, I'm in trouble on both gates, right? So, how do you stop a hand like that? If he punches me, if I pass out wrong, he punches again, I pass out this way, this is not realistic. I'm gonna get punched in the face. He's pulling it because he's my friend. That's one thing, because of the angle. Second thing, because of speed. If Chris is going fast and I'm trying to pass out on the inside, I'm gonna definitely get punched in the face. If I don't, it's because of luck or he's drunk, not because I'm any good. So, in Wing Chun, they give you a recovery technique of the Manzo. So if he punches me, he punches again. The Manzo allows me to recover because when I'm here, it's a big line and he swipes from high to low. But it doesn't mean it's bulletproof because the nature of a Manzo is the same as a Bongzo. The rotator cuff is being rota ro rotated this way, so by nature it's a weak structure compared to a Tanzo. Therefore, whenever I use it here, I have to make sure I recover back down this way with the wrapping. That's why it's in the third form, the wrapping before the palm. Also, the scoop and technique in the third form comes into play. If I'm here, I gotta take that open down. Be strong, be strong, Chris. I can't move his arm, right? But if I follow the wrapping device, the arm's going down. So, all that's in your third form, which is also, thanks, Chris. So if you're interested in that third form and the fourth form, please go to adamchengufu.com. We have a course ready for you there. Also, free ebook on our website. Message Chris, you get a free ebook. <laughs>